Hi class, so our topic for this meeting is about atomic structure and periodicity. Um, we will discuss about the atoms and the periodic table. So, ipepresent ko lang muna sa inyo yung mga atomic theories of matter. Um, yung mga early theories hanggang sa mag-evolve sila at mag-arrive sila sa Dalton's Atomic Theory. So, ang pinaka-first or earliest theory about the atomic structure was uh, proposed by Democritus in 462-370 BC. He proposed that the world was made up of two things, empty space and fine but indivisible particles called atomos. So, yung early uh, tawag sa atoms ay atomos pa. And then came Aristotle in 384 to 322 BC. He proposed that matter is a continuum and not made up of smaller particles like atomos. So parang uh, diniscredit niya yung early theory ni Democritus. And then he further proposed that nature is composed of earth, air, fire, and water, yung mga elements. And then, Ludacris, in 95 to 55 BC, he described matter as bodies composed of empty space that allows movement. And then, came Robert Boyle, he pushed on the discontinuous view of matter which is made up of particles. So, mayroon silang iba-ibang theory kung mapapansin nyo. And then, John Dalton, in 1766 to 1844 AD, refined the atomic view of matter through the Dalton's atomic theories. So, dito na tayo magpo-focus sa atomic theories ni, da ni John Dalton. So, first, each element is composed of extremely small particles called atoms. So, katulad din ng earlier, earliest um, theory ni Democritus about atomos. So that is the visual presentation of what he what he refers to as atoms. For example, is um, for example, yung atom of uh, the element oxygen, and then an atom of the element nitrogen. So those are visual presentations. <coughs> Excuse me. And then, all atoms of a given element are identical. But they differ from, from one element to another with different properties. So, for example, oxygen have um, identical or similar atoms. The red ones. Basta lahat ng atoms ng oxygen magkakapareho. But, uh, kapag ka kinompare mo yung si oxygen kay nitrogen, they have different um, atoms na. But within nitrogen, yung atoms si nitrogen ay pare-pareho. Okay? And then, atoms of one element cannot be changed into atoms of a different element. So, the atoms of oxygen cannot be changed to to become atoms of nitrogen. They have their own identity of atoms. Mm. The compounds are formed when atoms of more than one element combine with the same relative number and kind of atoms. So, nagkakombine sila in such proportions na nagbibigay ng stability dun sa compound natin. So, for this diagram, we have... We have the elements nitrogen and oxygen with with different atoms. And then kapag nag-combine sila, magiging nitrogen oxide siya na isang compound. From two elements or two or more elements, you will you will form a compound with the same relative number and kinds of atoms. Okay?
Sa Dalton's Atomic Theory, he explained several simple laws of chemical combination. So, ano-ano yung laws nito? Law of definite or constant composition, and then law of conservation of matter, and law of multiple proportions. So, sa bawat uh, combinations ng elements, ng atoms ng elements, kailangan masusunod yung mga uh, laws na to. Definite and constant composition, conservation of matter, and multiple proportions. So, it explains several... Ayun uh, na yun. So, itong law of definite or constant composition, it states that in a given compound, the kinds and relative numbers of atoms are constant. So, yan yung law of definite or constant composition. Dapat, yung isang given compound, uh, constant yung number of atoms niya. Hindi pwedeng mag-iba-iba. For example, at one instance, gusto natin for, for water, which is H2O, or two molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen, hindi na siya maiiba. Constant na siya. Yun yung sinasabi sa law of definite composition. And then, for law of con conservation of mass, it states that the total mass of the materials present after a chemical reaction is the same as the total mass before the reaction. So, dahil nakakonserve yung mass, kung ano yung weight or total mass ng materials uh, before a chemical re uh, after a chemical reaction dapat total yon dun sa mass na ginamit natin before the reaction and then for law of multiple proportions it states that when two or more elements combine to form more to form more than one compound they combine in a ratio of small whole numbers so, itong uh, law of multiple proportions, ina-apply yan, kaya tayo nagkakaroon ng balancing chemical equations. I'm not sure kung makakaabot pa tayo sa balancing of chemical equations, pero I hope so, para mas makita nyo yung, or mas ma-appreciate nyo yung law of multiple proportions. So, yung mga, ito naman yung mga early researches sa atomic particles. Subsequent experiments using the cathode ray tube or CRT led to the discovery of the following. Okay, ito yung mga discoveries ng, na nag -brought, naging brought about by the early researches on atomic particles. So, we have the protons, which was discovered by Eugene Goldstein in 1896. Followed by the electrons by J.J. Thomson in 1897. The neutrons was discovered by James Chadwick in 1932. Yung X-ray na ginamit nila sa mga researches nila ay na-discover noong 1895 by Wilhelm Roentgen. And then radioactivity was discovered by Antoine Henry Becquerel. So yung X-ray and yung radioactivity na gumagamit ng x-ray ay naging uh, tulong sa kanila para sa discovery ng protons, electrons, and neutrons na matatagpuan natin sa isang atomic particle. So, nagkandak sila ng mga early atomic models which was um, proposed uh, earlier by J.J. Thompson using the plum pudding atomic model. So, kung makikita nyo sa picture, this is an example of a plum pudding. So, he proposed an, uh, that an atom is made up of negatively charged electrons embedded in a nebulous cloud of positive charges of protons. So, yung pudding mismo, yung brown, yun yung kinoconsider niya na protons. And then, yung mga plum, yung mga black na yun, Yun yung kinoconsider niya na electrons. Electrons are negatively charged, uh, symbolized by E negative, and protons are positively charged, uh, symbolized by P positive. So, yan. 
Yung cloud na sinasabi kanina ni JJ Thompson is etong pink na to. And then you elect which are he which are considered by him as the protons and then etong mga bilog na blue ay yung negatively charged uh, electrons. Yung nuclear atomic model naman was proposed by Ernest Rutherford. He disproved or um, didiscredit niya yung nag-disapprove siya dun sa plum pudding theory through his alpha scattering experiment in gold foil. So, meron siyang ibang technique na ginamit which uh, disproves the plum pudding theory. So, ito yung ginamit niyang alpha scattering experiment. Yan yung diagram. So, gumamit siya ng beam of particles. And then, yan yung nakita niya. Electron scattered throughout a diffuse positive charge. So, his nuclear atomic model states that an atom has a dense center of positively charged, the nucleus, from which electrons move around. So, parang uh, pareho sila nang sinasabi na yung electrons na move, nagmumove around sa isang cloud. Pero, ang sina, ang dito sa experiment ni Ernest Rutherford, nakasama na yung discovery ng nucleus. Ito, yung gitna na yun. So, ito yung nucleus na positively charged. Ibig sabihin, yung protons nasa loob ng nucleus. Uh, while yung dito sa plum pudding theory, this one, yung kanina, ang sabi niya, yung protons na positively charged ay nandito lang din sa labas. Pero dense cloud siya. Tapos yung electrons nagmumove around doon. Pero sinabi ni Ernest Rutherford na yung positively charged protons pala nasa loob ng isang nucleus. Hindi siya nakascattered around katulad ng electrons. So another theory came by, proposed by Niels Bohr. He suggests that the electrons move in a path of definite amount of energy around the center known as the nucleus. So, meron din siyang nucleus dito sa planetary model. So, inadapt niya yung kay Ernest Rutherford. And the nucleus, according to Niels Bohr, is composed of the positively charged protons and the neutral neutrons. And, and not. So, ang sinasabi ni Niels Bohr sa isa nucleus, hindi lang protons ang present. Meron din siyang tinatawag na neutral, which are the neutrons. And then, yung electrons nagmumove around sa nucleus na yan. Okay? So, that is the example of the nucleus. Here is the nucleus. And then, minagnify ko anong presence sa nucleus. We have the protons and neutrons. And then, yung electrons, nasa labas lang siya. <coughs> This is an example of a sodium atom. Sodium which have, or natrium which have um, 11 neutrons and protons and 12 electrons. So, ito yung uh, particles niya. We have uh, electrons, protons, and neutrons. We have their electronic masses and the ch electronic charge. Yung electrons, lagi siyang negative. Yung protons, palagi siyang positive. And then, yung neutrons, zero siya or it is not charged. And then, uh, 
where, when Erwin Schrödinger developed the quantum mechanical model with Werner Heisenberg and Louis de Broglie, he, they further enhanced the planetary model by stating that electrons move at various energy levels with definite amount of energy or quanta. So, dito na yung uh, introduction ng uh, energy levels ng atoms. So, sa energy levels na yun, na-introduce na, na din yung atomic mass and atomic numbers. Atomic numbers and mass number, which are characterized, which characterizes each atom of the element. So, we have the atomic number Z, represented by Z. This is the fingerprint of an atom. It gives the, uh, the elements the unique number of protons. So, they have their own number of protons. And then the mass number, which is presented by, represented by A, gives the total number of protons and neutrons in an atom. So, medyo magkakaroon din tayo ng konting computation lang naman dito. Determination of atomic number and atomic mass. Or mass number, I mean. <clears throat> so, for example, we have the carbon atom. We have the mass number 12, which is presented, which pres represents the number of protons plus neutrons. And then the atomic number, the number of protons or electrons. So, kapag ka 12 yung mass number niya, ibig sabihin, 12 is the number of protons plus neutrons. Ito yung laman ng atomic nucleus. ba? And then, this is the symbol of the element. We have carbon for this example. Then, yung atomic number 6, it means we have 6 electrons and 6 protons. Okay? So, for our mass number, this is the formula for mass number. We have atomic number plus the number of neutrons. So, what is our atomic number? That is 6 plus the number of neutrons. We have the mass number 12, di ba? So, ang aalamin natin ngayon is number of neutrons. Ilan yung, neut sorry, yung neutrons natin? So, para makuha natin, itatranspose natin yung 6 sa kabilang side. That will be 12 minus 6 equals the number of neutrons. We have 6 neutrons. Okay? So, there. We, ha we are correct that the number of our neutrons is 6. Okay, so for our exercise, let's try this. How many protons, neutrons, and electrons are in an atom of? First is gold, and then strontium ion. Okay, so medyo mahirap yung sa may ion. Kasi kung mapapansin nyo, meron siyang positive 2 na charge. Ano kayang ibig sabihin yan? Tama ba? 180. Number of neutrons. 79. Hmm? Okay, so 118 yung number of neutrons natin for gold. Kasi ulitin natin, nabura kanina. Mass number, 
equals atomic number plus the number of neutrons. We have 197 and then atomic number is 79 plus number of neutrons. So, our number of neutrons will be 197 minus 79 and that would be 118. So, kapag tinanong how many protons, so yung number of protons and electrons ng isang neutral atom, this is a neutral atom, wala siyang charge, will be the same. So, kung 79 yung atomic number niya, atomic number represents the number of electrons, di ba? So, ang number of electrons natin is 79. So, kung uh, zero siya or neutral siya, wala siyang charge, that means kung ilan yung number of electrons niya, ganun din yung number of protons niya. So, okay. When, uh, so, ilan yung protons niya? Protons of uh, for gold is 79. Since neutral siya, Number of uh, protons will be equal to the number of electrons, that is 79. Number of neutrons, yung kinumpute natin kanina is 118. And then the number of electrons will be 79 from the mass number. Okay? So now we will go to the next one, the strontium ion. This is an ion with a positive charge. Ibig sabihin, pag positively charged siya, kung ilan yung number ng um, number niya dito, ibig sabihin, mas marami yung protons niya ng ganun kadami. Okay. So, since yung uh, lagi nating tatandaan na yung protons natin ay are inside the nucleus. So, kapag ka, for example, this is an atom of uh, strontium, I'm sorry, strontium, yung um, nucleus niya, nandun yung number of neutrons and protons, and then yung electrons ang nasa labas. Okay? So, kapag dito, since gagawin natin positive 2, yung, since ang charge niya is positive 2, um, mas madali tayo, dahil nasa labas yung electrons, mas madali tayo makakapagtanggal ng Electron. So, sa electrons tayo magma-minus ng 2. Hindi tayo makakapagdagdag dito sa nucleus dahil nasa loob siya ng atom. Okay, lagi nyo yung tatandaan class ha. Okay, let's start. So, ang formula natin kanina is mass, sorry, mass number is equal to atomic number plus the number of neutrons. We have the mass number 90. And then, our atomic number is 38 plus the number of neutrons. So, hindi natin alam. So, number of neutrons equals 90 minus 38 equals 52. So, number of neutrons natin is 52. Ang number of protons natin ay same with our atomic number, 38. So, yung electrons natin, number of electrons, supposedly, kapag neutral yung atom, it should have the same number of protons. So, dapat 38 din siya. But, we have a positive 2 charge in our given strontium ion. So, magma-minus tayo ng ilan? Ilan yung minus natin? So, 2 minus 2. Kung ano yung charge niya, yun yung minus natin. So, that will be, our electrons would be 36 only in this given ion. So, we have 52 52 neutrons, 38 protons, and 36 electrons in our given strontium ion. Okay? So, alam nyo na yung pagkuha ng mga number of protons, neutrons, and electrons. So, ngayon, bibigyan ko kayo ng exercise para isasubmit nyo as your classwork. So, you have to complete that given table 
assuming each column represents a neutral species or atom. So, neutral siya. Walang charge yung mga given na species or atom. So, ikakomplete yung table. First, bibigay nyo yung symbol. So, ito yung example ng symbol. Kailangan meron tayong makikita dyan na yung symbol mismo for crop. Symbol, atomic symbol. And then, we have the atomic mass given and atomic number. So, kailangan pag nagsulat kayo dito sa mga blanks na to, kompleto yung symbol na ibibigay nyo with matching mass number and atomic number. Okay? Do not forget that, please. And then, for number of protons, number of neutrons, electrons, and the mass number. Okay? Kaya kayo nyo na i-complete yan. Okay, class? We will submit that on our next meeting. Okay? Oh, no. I will check that pala on our next meeting. I will give you time para gawin nyo yan. Pero kaya kaya nyo na yan. If you have any questions, just feel free to ask me. Okay? Okay, so we will discuss about isotopes. These are atoms with the same number of protons or same atomic number but different number of neutrons. So these are the different types or different isotopes of a carbon atom. We have carbon 11, carbon 12, 13, and 14. So they have the same number of protons and same number of electrons but they have different number of neutrons. That's why they have different number of atomic masses. Okay. So, ito yung representation ng different isotopes, isotopes of a sodium atom. So, we have the here 11 protons and 12 neutrons and then on the other Isotope, we have 11 protons and 13 neutrons. Okay, so we have sodium-23 and sodium-24. These isotopes exist in nature. Okay? So, uh, for the atomic mass of isotopes, the average atomic mass of each element in the periodic table is the sum of the exact individual isotopes and their corresponding abundance. So, yung nasa periodic table natin, atomic mass, yun na yung average ng mga isotopes, uh, existing isotopes ng atom na yun. Nung element, I mean. Okay, so the atomic mass is expressed either in atomic mass unit or grams per mole and is equal to 1.66054 times 10 to the negative 24 grams or 1 gram is equal to 6.02214 times 10 to the 23rd atomic mass unit. Okay, so quantum numbers naman tayo. This describes... The designation of how electrons are distributed among various orbitals in the principal shell and subshells. So, in shell, each division of space. So, high class. Medyo nag check ako ng uh, slides natin for uh, today. Since mahaba pa pala siya, I will just give you the remaining time of your of our schedule para i-answer yung exercise na to. So, use the remaining time. Ilan pa ba yung time natin? Two and a half hours. So, I think that's enough time for you to answer that given table below para maisabit nyo na din at the end of our schedule. Okay, so next time ko na lang, next meeting ko na lang, i-discuss about quantum energy, quantum levels, kasi medyo mahaba pa yung discussion doon. So for now, we will stop with this, doon sa atomic number and atomic mass. And please, 
turn in this exercise. I will post it also on your classwork. Um, para ma-submit nyo sa akin before um, the end of your schedule, okay? For those na modular, pwede nyo naman siya i-submit sa akin um, pag nagawa nyo na siya. Okay? If you have any questions, just please feel free to ask me through our personal messaging app. Okay, so ma para magawa natin ng paraan. Okay, thank you class and please stay safe and healthy. Always follow the safety protocols. Thank you.